Um, I have the bug. I can't min-max. <laughs> well, if you can't min-max, you're not even playing. Uh, it, it does sound like you, you're, you're itching. I mean, speaking of bugs, it sounds like you are definitely itching to play some Ravnica. What's min-max? Uh, so, Jack, uh, min-max is when you minimize your weaknesses and maximize your strengths. Um, min-maxing is just you're, you're maximizing all of the positive aspects of your character that you possibly can. Ivalon has given me the sideways uh, glance. Guess I got to step out of Tuesday. What? It's like Barbarian obviously wants everything and everything boosts strength. You know, so uh, it uh, min maxing is um, in concept also called care op for character optimization. So it would be like yes, you are a barbarian and you want to you want to deal the most damage and hit all the time. And so strength, uh, you're you're going to, you know, you say whatever. I don't care about int. I don't care about charisma. I am building a tank. Not even a glass cannon. I'm building a tank. I can blow stuff out of the water and I can take hits. Um, min maxing. See, care opping and min maxing and munchkins. All share points in a Venn diagram, right? Those are the circles that overlap each other. They're not all the same, however. I don't even know if wisdom really matters. Right? Kronk the Barbarian just wants to be placed in front of something uh, Kronk can hit. And to that end, dexterity is probably also not as important? Question mark? But yeah, that, that's the general idea. Um, power gaming, min-maxing, care opping, uh, being a munchkin. There's a lot of different terms that kind of convey the same thing. Tis what it is. Yep. And it's not an illegitimate form of playing D&D. &D. Your DM might say, you know what? We're going to do a one shot. And honestly, I'm going to try and kill you. I'm not going to be, you know, a jerk about it and throw level three players at a Tarrasque. But I'm, I'm letting you within the confines of, I want you to gen up a, a 10th level character. And realize that I'm going to make this a, a deadly kick-in-the-door style dungeon. Have fun. I hope you can survive. And so in this regard, min-maxing is the, is the bare requirement for potentially living in this uh, situation. Yeah. Derek, you definitely seem to be over the moon. And I'm very happy that those beholders are... Uh, are, are the uh, the apples of your eyes. Yeah, hey, sometimes you just jet up a character, right? In fact, we're, we're going to do that right now. Now, over on D&D time, and I'll, I'll provide the link again if anyone is, uh, is new here for this. If you play, hey, 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 look at this, on Friday, you can play with them. They run three games of four people each. So 12 players a week, they cycle through their games. Pete and Jeremy are, are awesome dudes. Um, now they do have, they do have some, uh, some rules for character creation, right? You can find it here. I'm not going to go over all of this like we did in, in the prior segment. I mean, even then we touched on it, but I don't need to, do, I don't need to do that. We're going to be using the D and D custom races and we made the circle of trash druid in our last segment 
And so this one, we're going to make a Way of Dreams monk. And so we open the character randomizer. We have a blank character sheet ready to go. And it is time. Let's roll percentile. 48. We have a male character. And if you see, I'm filtering out the content for D&D time. We have a male character who is of the race. I'm going to roll a D3. I've already made a bunny folk character. And if I get a Florin, it's not going to be a Blossomer or a Fungal because I've already made those characters. So I'm going to roll a three-sided die for the remaining three. And then depending from there, uh, I'll roll to see which sub-race we have. We rolled a two. So that... Another another Florin. I'm not against it. I'd like to do something other than a Florin. So maybe I should just have that be a, an odds or evens, Entithrope or Undead. Because I've, I've not made either of those. Although, boy, apparently the plant the plants really like me. And so maybe this... Maybe this... This is a strand, right? In an alternate universe, I did make a third Florin. I have nothing against them. Florins are fun. But... If we already have two segments of making them, I've not explored the Entithropes, which are bug people, or the Undead, which were people. So instead, I'm just going to go odds or evens, and I'll roll the d12. Evens! Uh, evens were Undead. I'm going to roll 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... What? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I am going to roll a 7-sided die and find out what I was before I became what I am. Pfft. Try jumbling around those tenses, right? Three. Dragonborn, dwarf, elf. We are an undead elf. A male undead elf. who is going to be a monk circle of dr or not circle <laughs> way of dreams level 1 is that's where that's where you start Let's see elves are medium sized and we'll continue now we'll roll on the balanced odds like we did before for our alignment 11 just on the cut so we made a chaotic evil character, and now we've made a lawful good character. Or we're making a lawful good. No, no, we're, we're not min-maxing. Uh, these are random rolls. And welcome back, Bjorn. Next up, well, we don't need to worry about the level or the feats because we start at level one and D&D uh, &D time does not allow the use of feats or multi-classing. Our background, uh, they do allow all of these as backgrounds. I don't have all of these sources up and immediately available in PDF form uh, for you. I'm going to stick with the player's handbook. But as you can see, check this out. If we choose all of the uh, the, the printed uh, backgrounds, there are 62. Ooh. Here, let's do an experiment. Boom. 62-sided die. Roll it. We got a 43. An Orzhov representative. We get intimidation in religion and then, you know, our, our, normal, our normal spread of stuff. Uh, so, uh, so if we allowed for everything to happen, this would have been an Orzov representative. However, to keep things a little simple and streamlined, I'm going to stick with the Pahaba and roll an 18-sided die. Seven. 
Another folk hero? Ooh. Ooh, I wonder if these two don't work together uh, or work against each other in some way. If we have a Joker, do we have a Batman? Orzov is Ravnica. Is Ravnica... Was Ravnica not in their list of things that was approved? Oh, you know what? You know what? D&D &D time... That's true, because the... Uh, for D&D &D time, I remember uh, Jeremy was expressly saying this. The backgrounds in Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica are very steeply ingrained into the setting. And the things you get for the backgrounds... Um, I, I don't know if he said that they're overpowered necessarily in a way, uh, but for the scale or the consideration of sort of generic D and D, uh, they're kind of powerful. You know, you, you get all those, you, you get the extra spells and all that, all this other stuff. Hey, DMs, welcome. All right, so we had our... Our folk hero... Uh, let's roll a d10. Seven. So we didn't get the six. Last time it was a six. I don't know what the seven is, but we're going to find out. Folk hero number seven. We already know our class and our subclass. And so really the only thing to, to go down and choose again, instead of a fungal florin, uh, we are going to choose an elf undead. And roll percentile to find out where in the life cycle. We rolled a 61. So we are a middle-aged elf undead. And it, of course it's giving a bunch of question marks because, I mean, how old we were when we died doesn't reflect how long we've been around. And so in this case, we look middle-aged for an elf. And, I mean, how do elves look middle-aged? Uh, that's for you to describe. <laughs> it's, your, it's your problem now, suckers. Oh, yeah, DMs, we ended up giving away four boxes from subscriptions we're just we're like seven shot seven subs shy of another of a new box and derek um derek uh paid in to put another box into the lot and then we also gave away a crocodile miniature okay the the work has been done we don't need to worry about a lot of the extra stuff. So, new new character generator. Well, I, 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 I'm going to need the, uh, the dice, but I'll just click on this again over here. Let's go back now and explore the character. Um, let's explore the undead. They descend upon us with fire and steel, relentless. They know I have no face to smile. Thus, I must know no joy. They know I have no eyes to see. Thus, I must know no beauty. They know I have no heart to beat. Thus, I must know no love. I know it is they, not I, who are the monsters. An unknown undead, moments before oblivion. I like that. That was very well written. He's a Bailnorn heard that term before. Where have I heard Bail Norn before? B again. Hey, but the list still grows. It may be getting more difficult, but it still grows. An undead creature is any creature that has died and has been restored to life through imperfect means. This imperfection or this imperfect restoration is colloquially, colloquially referred to as undeath. Many undead are creatures intentionally and maliciously are created, I'm sorry, intentionally and maliciously to serve as unthinking servants, but others are created unintentionally through failed rituals or other mishaps, divine or arcane in nature. Ivalon, welcome aboard, and thank you, DMs, for giving that gift out. 
Whenever an undead is created, there is a chance that the soul of the creature remains within its body and it retains some semblance of its living personality. This living, or this is particularly common during resurrection rituals gone awry or when necromantic magics are used to raise a creature too soon after its death. When this occurs, the undead retains... Uh, oh, Pete and Jeremy, are y'all watching this as a VOD or on YouTube in the future? There's another little, a quick little uh, spelling or a grammar. Um, the undead retains a its sentience and self-awareness. If raised by malicious necromantic magics, sentient undead are often dominated by the spellcaster who raised them until the magic fades. Undeath is a widespread phenomena across the lands of D&D time, whether in the Baradak Swamp, the Big Rock Candy Mountains, or Central City's southernmost borough, Southtown. Undead are a common sight, both as friends and foes. With the high prevalence of undeath as a whole, the existence of sentient undead should not be wholly unexpected. The highest concentration of sentient death is Southtown, where sentient undead make up the majority of the inhabitants. Some famous undead in the lands of D&D time include Philip Q. Janglebones, undead detective, and the Crypt Keeper, a lawful good lich deity. Despite the relatively high population of sentient undead in the lands of D&D time, soulless undead are considerably more common. To most people in the lands of D&D time, undead are terrifying threats to their homes and lives. Ooh, we get quirk. Due to the infusion of negative energy, which fuels their unlife, many sentient undead find themselves plagued by peculiar tendencies and intrusive thoughts. An undead player may roll or select from the following quirks or may consider creating their own. All right, we're going to roll a D8. And what is our quirk? Five. Your undead body reacts poorly to living creatures, causing you to itch and sneeze uncontrollable, uh, uncontrollably whenever you touch one. Whew, we're a monk. We're going to be... That's what we do. <laughs> that's how we do. But you know what? That's what makes for some fun character... Uh, I guess that didn't copy. That's what makes for some uh, good role-playing. What do you do with a monk that's allergic to touching people? Your undead body reacts poorly to living creatures, causing you to itch and sneeze uncontrollably whenever you touch one. All right, what's next? Undead names. Um, undead traits. Your constitution score increases by one. Age. Well, age is going to be what it is. And uh, size, I mean, this is all going to be based on elves. Um, 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 my, ooh, base walking speed, despite being medium, is 25 feet. So we are a little slower. We have superior dark vision, or you have superior vision and dark, so we get 60. Poison immunity, we are immune to poison damage and the poisoned condition. So where it says IRV for immunities, resistances, and vulnerabilities... I'm, cl I'm clicking here for immunity to poison. Undead Fortitude. If damage would reduce you to zero hit points, you may make a constitution saving throw with a DC of five plus the damage taken, unless the damage is radiant or from a critical hit. On a success, you are reduced to one hit point instead. The saving throw cannot 
uh, benefit from magical bonuses. All right, we are getting undead fortitude. Undead nature. An undead does not require air, food, or drink. Undead also uh, do not require sleep. Instead, they enter into an inert state, remaining semi-conscious for four hours a day. While inert, an undead dreams after a fashion. Such dreams are actually mental exercises or fleeting memories of their lives, of their living lives, that help to coalesce their consciousness. After resting in this way, you gain the same benefit that a human does from eight hours of sleep. And you know what's interesting? We are a we're a way of a dream monk. And the character we just created prior to this can put us to sleep because sleep is a part of the the soporific. Um, the, the spores, the soporific um, abilities that our trash druid has. This is coming together pretty well. Undead nature. Uh, languages, common. Subrace, choose one of the following subraces. Elf. Increase our dexterity score by one. Sorry, I'm going to have to wiggle this around here. Elven agility, so our, our speed goes up to 30. You have proficiency in perception. We're medium-sized. We can speak, read, and write elvish. Common and elvish. Or elven, depending on what you decide to do. And there we go. I mean, we, we could describe ourselves. Um, I mean, we have a lot of freedom to describe. Are, are we skeletal? Are we looking like a zombie? Are we looking like a corpse? Are we looking like a painted corpse? You know, passable, kind of decorated. People might give us a second look, but... Um, or are we, are we all there? It's just that our heart doesn't beat. Okay, that is the racial options. Now let's head over to chapter four in our player's handbooks. That's right. Y'all got to break your player's handbooks out. You, you should have known this was coming. And we have a folk hero. Let's head back to it now. We are going to get animal handling and survival. Tool proficiencies, some kind of artisan tools. And we put that on the last character. Um, I did not specify which... And if we really want to, we can just roll. I think there was... Was there 13 different artisan tools? I'll have to count. But something may just directly pop out at us, too. Artisan tools and vehicles land. Here we go. Um, our equipment for D&D &D time, it's... Yes, we get our starting equipment, but we also get more or different. I'm not going to worry about our starting equipment for this character. Uh, because there are rules for the starting equipment on their website, D&D, &D, the letter D, the letter N, the letter D, time.stream. Um, it's nothing complex. In fact, it, it's really freeing. Uh, but yeah, just uh, you could check it out. I'm not going to be worried about equipment uh, for this character. Now, we are a folk hero number seven. I trained the peasantry to use farm implements as weapons against a tyrant's soldiers. So, maybe he's stitched from many folk heroes. <laughs> Taxidermy. <laughs> so he has a little bit of uh, he has a little bit of uh, the revolution. Um, you know, th th this character is uh, <laughs> was was put together from those uh, who did not survive. And apparently was put together in a vaguely elven shape. 
I trained the peasantry to use farm implements as weapons against a tyrant's soldiers. I wonder if somehow that didn't lead to our death and or our undeath. Right? As a, as a good act. Um, you know, we didn't pass on per se, but we lingered around in order to continue to do good works. Remember to use your background features, everyone. Rustic Hospitality, you are a recognized figure, and you're welcome where you go. Now, it did say Undead Face Prejudice, and we may be very well uh, for Rustic Hospitality, but people might still give us room and board, but be begrudging about it. Or something along those lines. Our characteristics, our personality traits, rather. Uh, let's... I do need the dice roller again. 2d8. 2 and 8, and then our ideal bond and flaw. 1, 4, 5. 2, 8, 1, 4, 5. 2, 8, 1, 4, and 5. What is our undead character's personality? If someone is in trouble, I'm always ready to lend help. And number eight, I get bored easily. When am I going to get on with my destiny? What if, what if this poor person has already fulfilled it? And they just, they, they're not capable of recognizing it. It was kind of like, actually, you know, Derek, with Fox in the Box looking for this cursed item, speaking also of undead characters, the thing where, or the consideration of whoever didn't know the character in death while well, under the life effects of this illusion, uh, you know, they, they can't get to know this person. But people who do know the person already can. I thought that was really cool. Our ideal is number one. Respect. People deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. His bond is number four. My tools are symbols of my past life. And I carry them so that I will never forget my roots. And lastly, number five is our flaw. Who we have a rivalry secretly. I believe that things would be better. If I were a tyrant, lording over the land. Oh yes, Foxbox is going to have fun with that idea. Oh, did she decide to apply that as the curse on that item? Alright, we have our race, we have our background... Now it's time to go to our class. Now remember, we're, we're getting all of the base monk stuff. Uh, it's only the subclass that we're modifying. At first level, our proficiency bonus is a plus two. Uh, we are going to get martial arts, which is going to be a 1d4 plus what our dex or our strength is. Unarmored defense and martial arts. And we get no key points. So there we go. We are a D8 hit die class. Uh, so we are 1D8 because we're level 1. That's pretty straightforward. No armor proficiencies. Weapons. Simple weapons and short swords. Tools. 
Choose artisan tools or a musical instrument. Well, you know what? It seems like we were very handy in some way. So I'm going to put artisan's tools times two. Now for the skills. Choose two from acrobatics, athletics, history, insight, religion, and stealth. You know what? Maybe the tools we take can give us some clues then. Because otherwise, why, um, why would we have them? Right? If we're clumsy, why would we have delicate tools? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seventeen. All right. Let's make a seventeen sided die. And we rolled a thirteen. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. So potter's tools. And. We rolled a one. That's alchemist supplies. Very good. And you know what? You got to keep your al your alchemist uh, reagents in something, and why not have them be the? Um, why not have them be your own creations, right? Your own way of labeling, of sorting, uh, and going on. Hey, Gareth, welcome, welcome. I'm finishing up a. I'm finishing up an exercise in using our new. Um, character generator because we retired the spreadsheet last week all right what we what would we take alchemy and pottery Oh, that's really neat, Gareth. If you'd like to explain that a little bit more, you're welcome to. I'm kind of getting an acrobatics and... Hmm... Acrobatics and history, I think, are kind of reverberating with me. I'm not going to worry about the equipment because we, we went over that uh, with Pete from D&D &D time. The equipment matters, but it also doesn't matter at the same time. All right, so that's what we get from Monk. Now, unfortunately, because we're making a level one character, we're not going to see... Um, we're not going to see what happens in the way of dreams at level one. Um, now the, they made this over the course of several sessions online. You could, uh, you might be able to go back and find them and watch it, but we're not going to get stuff, uh, such as lucidity until uh, third level. Well, let's, let's look at it real quick. Starting when you choose this tradition at third level, you can use your key to tap into your own spell or, um, to tap into your own dreams, duplicating the effects of certain spells. As an action, you can spend two key points to cast Levitate, targeting self, mirror image, phantasmal force, or see invisibility, without requiring verbal or material components. Additionally, your mind's eye remains cognizant of the thoughts of those around you. While sleeping, you do not suffer a penalty uh, for your passive perception. 
That's pretty good. The only thing I can see being an odd interaction is if you have a Kalistar figure. Because the Kalistar do not operate on the, the plane of dreams. At least not in the same way that other races do. Uh, no, I think you're fine, Derek. Uh, it's nothing big, really. List all the races that exist in a country, then apply what percentage it makes up, and it applies to one, uh, all to a 1 to 100 scale. I found if I chose it randomly myself, I drifted towards various races too often. Huh. Interesting that the randomization would lead you to sort of a, a cluster pattern. Dreamwalk, Waking Sleep, hey, it's all here. And in fact, I'm going to put a link over to it so you can explore it as well. If you'd like to see this uh, Monk alternate subclass that was developed and is playable, if you want to go, um, you want to be um, a Monk of this path, of this way, then you can do so at D&D time. So, no spell casting yet. Uh, we pretty well, you know, I know it looks blank. This is a level one character. Uh, however, I think we're we're just about done. You know, we got to drop in our, we got to drop in our scores. Which. Fifteen, fourteen. Thirteen, twelve, ten, and eight. It's going to put dexterity at a sixteen. It's going to put constitution at a fourteen. There we go, and when this populates, and I, I, I think you've seen where this goes, right? You just you take the number, and if it has the radio button filled in, you add your proficiency bonus. So it's not threes down the board; it's three five three three. Two for con, and we specialize in history. Got my saving throws as a monk. There we go. Uh, since we're tagging with dexterity, that's going to be a plus five to hit and a plus three extra damage. Hit points. Also going to be ten. Initiative at a plus three. Armor class. Well, if we're not wearing armor, it's uh, ten plus dex plus whiz. So, you know, fifteen's not terrible. Passive Perception is 10 plus Perception modifier, so that's a 14. And congratulations, we have a character that we can name. I know how to do it, I don't have the chart in front of me. But uh, what I can do is I can talk to the, the boys in between the streams and uh, and see what they can do to help out here. Better believe I got me some drow. For, or that's for instance, I've only had one Gnome NPC in my games over the course of five years. Yeah, personal bias does bleed in. I, I agree, and I'm guilty of that as well. You know, in the way that the the way that um there was already an interaction with the dream plane just makes this very, you know, eerie and auspicious, but then again we're also talking about the undead. So I really like it. I do I do.
All right. Well, everyone, we have completed our second character. Um, and I think that we can have a, a close tie-in. I know I didn't get into a ton of the details. Uh, because this character would relate to Zula. And I believe would also be a, not a fixture. Obviously not at, what, at uh, level one. But would definitely be an agent known to Zula. And work maybe for her in some instances. Or even against her. Makes for an interesting rivalry. Uh, but what I think we're going to do is we hit the 3 a.m. mark. And I'm uh, I'm a little tired. I hope I don't like... I look, I look undead myself uh, in so doing. Uh, but we're going to go raid Delcorin. Uh, Delcorin's been uh, hanging out in the channel since uh, almost day one. He's playing some Mass Effect 2 and doing some side quests. So let's go promote him and um, and give him some views and chat activity and eyeballs on his stream. And you know what? I'm going to... I'm definitely going to crash. Uh, I'm going to get some good rest after I take the garbage out. Um... Because sometimes you just got to do it. Even if it's kind of cold out still. Even though it was warmer yesterday than it was today. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, let's go um, Let's go raid Delcorin. And say hi. And uh, extend some Matty Morg's love over to him. As he's going through this uh, venerable sci-fi RPG series. Thank you all very much. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you. And I'll see you Thursday for some more Maddie Morgs character generation. Uh, the same thing, but different. Uh, and we'll play around with uh, we'll play around with the spreadsheet. It's so awesome and so much fun. My gosh. Ned Flanders on world domination. Time for uh, reneducation. I like it, Derek. <laughs> 